We're back, everybody, talking about those Super Bowl ads. I, I made the Super Bowl through halftime, right before the blackout. And in my head, I had my favorite ads. And then this morning, when I, woke up, when I woke up and I opened USA Today and I saw their ad meter and who they ranked as one, two, three, and so forth, I was surprised, but pleasantly happy, because it seems like America is valuing quality patriotism, and not the silly stuff that I liked, so I guess I'm the demented one here. We're going to talk to two gentlemen, two friends with 55 years of combined experience in the ad space. First joining me on set, we have AJ Hubani, the CEO of Telebrands, and joining me from Tampa, Tony Sullivan, or Sully Sullivan, the CEO of Sullivan Productions. <laughs> Hi, thanks for coming back on, both of you. Uh, good to have you. So, am I the only demented one who liked that creepy kissing GoDaddy ad with Barb Raffaelli and uh, the geeky guy, AJ? Well, I have to say that ad probably got the most bang for the buck because <laughs> people are talking about it. But, you know, did it get the key branding across? Did it increase revenue for the company? I don't know. You know, I, I think it's one of those things that is a, definitely an inexpensive commercial to shoot. You know, gross people out, got them talking about it, probably took out a life of its own virally. But as far as accomplishing any key goals, I don't think so. Yeah, and most people don't even know what GoDaddy is, and they've been spending $3.8 million for 30 seconds of TV time in the Super Bowl for a lot of years now. Anthony, your take on that ad? I wanted to be the guy in that ad. Um, <laughs> that, that, he definitely had the, the, the best part of that one. I, I agree with AJ. It was kind of gross. It got people talking. I actually thought the second GoDaddy ad, um, when all people from around the world were talking about, you know, they thought they had their own idea, and I think it was uh, Sky Waitress was the tagline. I thought that was the better of the two ads. Um, you know, I think GoDaddy going for the shock value. Does it make you want to buy their product? I don't know. I, I don't know. So I, I think it's a little too edgy. I, I really do. And I think I'm kind of I'm kind of done with the GoDaddy shock value. Okay. All right. And you seem to agree with the rest of America, the both of you, that we're going to show you the ad that ranked number one, the Anheuser Busch Clydesdale ad. Let, let's take a look at it right here. Do we have it? We're queuing it up now. All right. Well, I'll talk while we have it. I'll just stop if it comes up. But basically, the, America loved this one. You see the, the trainer and the Clydesdale uh, try to... You know, they have it. All right. Here we go. I took my love, took it down. I climbed a mountain and I turned around. Well, I... All right, I cried. <laughs> you liked well, that one, AJ. Well, that's one of the great things about the commercial. It made people cry. You know, Anheuser-Busch, Budweiser is very clever. You know, the Clydesdale is synonymous with the Budweiser brand. So the attachment to the Clydesdale is actually attachment to the brand. Mm -hmm. And you see the, the, the nurture, the Clydesdale. There's love. There's emotion attached. And uh, you know, studies have shown that emotional attachment or emotional experience in a commercial helps you remember the brand more. Okay. And that was, so, that was so great about the commercial. And you talked about quality. You know, America's opting for quality rather than cheese. This was a real quality commercial. I agree. So were some of the others, which we'll get into in a second. But, uh, Anthony, why do you like that ad so much? What did, it, did it make you cry? Was it a tearjerker for you? Me cry, but I know it made a lot of people cry. Um, but I tell you what, I will say that ad would not have worked had they not used Fleetwood Mac as the soundtrack. The music brought it home. Um, I think sticking with the Clydesdales is, is, is was a phenomenal idea. Right. Anheuser Busch and Budweiser in particular really seemed to understand the attachment to those horses and to take the file to tell that story and then to score it to uh, Stevie Nicks singing "Landslide" just took that commercial to a whole other level. And um, 
you know, it, it, it really made me want to go and have a bud. So, and I don't even <laughs> like Budweiser. So they did their job as far as I was concerned. Home run, 10 out of 10. Anheuser actually had four and a half minutes of TV time uh, last night, but I don't remember any of the other commercials. Do you guys? Is that bad? I, I remember some of them. Some of the, I think there were definitely misses, like the Bud Light commercials. Uh -huh. you know, the one where they had the voodoo dolls at the end. The other one with the, 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 uh, the lucky chair. Uh, I think those were misses. People really don't remember those commercials, yeah. but the home run was definitely the Cosby yeah, I, commercial. Yeah, go ahead. I think they were misses too. I mean, you have to understand, I think in the Super Bowl, most people are watching it in a crowded environment with a ton of people. A lot, half the audience has probably had a beer or two. So <laughs> as soon as you start complicating your message, I think you lose your audience. And I think the simple approach is the way to go. I think Bud Light missed it. I actually really thought uh, God made a farmer. Um, was was phenomenal. It was very patriotic. Um, I think Dodge, the last three years, have gone with that patriotic. They went with halftime last year, and they went with Eminem the year before. I've been a big fan of that. I think the timing of their commercial was was great. And um, you know, how could you not like that ad? Yeah, so, so you know, the, the only problem with that, ad, I agree with you, it was a great ad. But the biggest problem with that ad is that you can't remember the brand. You know, they, it was a phenomenally produced, terrific commercial. But you ask people, what was the brand? What were they advertising? Very few people will say Dodge Trucks. It came at the end. But there's an iconic radio broadcaster with the voiceover. But this ad, and it came in number two, according to Ad Meter by USA Today, it was two minutes long. And that's what surprised me, because we think we're this instant gratification, fast culture, and then we love a two-minute long ad. Um, we use the two minute to our most popular um, you know, ad time for OxyClean and a lot of the stuff I actually work with, with AJ. Two minutes is our favorite time. Now, obviously, in the okay. Super Bowl, you've got to have pretty deep pockets to, to, to uh, spend that kind <laughs> of money. If but in two was, minutes, you can tell a story. If 30 seconds was $4 million, how much was two minutes? Was it four times? Was it three 16, easy payments of four, four, easy, four easy payments of $2 million. Yeah, oh. that's it. <laughs> Pocket change, right? No, I'm kidding. Okay, you guys disagree on the Doritos ad. Uh, so, AJ, you liked it. Anthony, you did not like it. I'm kind of right in the middle. Why'd you like it, AJ? All right, because you know, Doritos is really good at tying in the key branding mes message, which is Doritos are irresistible. We'll play the ad as you're They talking. always get their brand across. Uh, Doritos comes across loud and clear. And the commercials are always hilarious. <laughs> so the goat for sale was funny. <laughs> I'm... I, I yeah. thought I thought it was okay. That I really did. I, I think that Doritos the last two years have done better with the little pug that hit the glass. I thought that was better, and I thought licking the fingers, which was I think two years ago, was better. I thought, yep, yeah, Doritos was good, but was it great? No. Um, I think that out of the last three years, that was the worst commercial that they've done. But it was still good. Plus, I, I don't really like Doritos that much, so <laughs> I think AJ, you got a soft spot for Doritos. I do. I'm a big snack guy. I'm impressed that you can remember the ads from years past for the particular brand. That's pretty good. That's what we do. You know how hard it is? Do you know how hard it is to watch the Super Bowl and watch the ads? I didn't pee for four hours. <laughs> You know, well, that's the thing. I, I force myself to watch a lot of these ads. And if I go to a viewer chat, we have Big Vinny 323 saying the commercials this year were almost as bad as the first three quarters of the game. And, you know, I think all in all, with the exception of the disgusting kissing GoDaddy ad, I was distracted because there's people around, you're drinking, you're eating. Something needs to really, like, smack you on the head for you to appreciate it. You know, I... Listen, we were focused on the commercials because we had to be, right? But yes. I asked people that were not focused on the commercials at the end of the game, yeah. what do they remember? And you know the one commercial that everyone remembers? No. Coca-Cola, the Coke Chase. <laughs> everyone remembers that commercial. It was fun. They got their brand across. Uh -huh. People remembered it was Coca-Cola because they kept on flashing to the big giant Coca-Cola in the desert. Mm -hmm. And it was bright. It was colorful. It was good music. You know, so you had the showgirls. You had the... The Arab, you had, uh, you had the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the cowboys all you chasing, and then they tied it together at the end and showed the winner of the race, yeah. which I thought that was terrific. The, the early numbers are in now, and this year's viewership was another record. 111.3 million people watched Super Bowl 47, watched the Ravens win. And I'm curious about a couple of things. Obviously, we have this historic blackout. The, huge victory through halftime for the Ravens. Then it's blacked out. 
viewers leave. They leave their Super Bowl parties. They start doing other things. They get up, unlike you, Anthony, and go to the bathroom. Maybe they don't come back to the TV. And now you have 40 advertisers in 55 commercials saying, what about our $4 million for a 30-second ad spot? They get mad. Well, I, I don't think they lost viewership. I, when that I, I don't think they lost viewership, when, quite frankly, because uh -huh. you know, the, the second half of the game was, was so enticing. Plus, it's Super Bowl Sunday. You have to see the game through to, to the end. Okay, it so no big matter. deal for you. No big deal. All right. Your take, Anthony? Yeah, I, I thought the, the blackout was, uh, you know, it, it made it more interesting. What a great comeback by the 49ers. I thought the biggest winner of the night, besides the Ravens, was Beyonce. Um, big time. I thought she killed it. She really did. I think there was a football game going on during the Beyonce show. So... Uh, <laughs> Big up, shout out to Beyonce. I know, she did do good, she Beyonce. She did phenomenal. She, she, she was like, it. you accused me of lip syncing, and I will show you that she gave it her all. I, she was fierce. She was. She made me like want to get up and like go to the gym or something. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. AJ Hubani, the CEO of Telebrands, and Anthony Sullivan with Sullivan Productions. Really appreciate it. Both of your websites are on the screen. All right, we're going to go to a break right now. We'll be back right after this.